Have you ever wondered how many rockets launch each year and which country is responsible for most of these launches? Have you been curious as to how this number has changed over the last decade, especially with the growth of SpaceX? In this video, we will address these questions and many more as we dive deep into the data regarding orbital rocket launches. So let's talk about that. In this video, we will be looking at a lot of data regarding orbital rocket launches over the last decade, starting from the beginning of 2010 all the way up until the end of 2019. We'll be looking at quite a few different graphs, so just stick along to see which each one represents and what insight we can gain from some of them. Now, before I get started going into the actual data, I need to discuss some of the assumptions that I'm making in terms of the data itself. Now, if you want to skip this, you can go to the next timestamp marked below. But ultimately, we need to understand some of these assumptions so we know what exactly we're talking about in these graphs. And the first one has to do with the launch provider. Remember, in this data, we are talking about orbital rocket launches. So when I say a country is responsible for an orbital rocket launch, that country is essentially developing the rocket, not necessarily the payload. Now, a perfect example of this is recently SpaceX has launched the SOWCOM 1B mission. Now, SpaceX is a United States based company. Therefore, this rocket launch was a United States rocket launch, even though the payload, the actual communication satellite, was an Argentinian based satellite. This essentially is representing one of the main assumptions we're making here. When we talk about orbital rocket launches, we aren't necessarily talking about the payload of the rocket launch, but instead we're talking about the rocket that's actually launching into space. So this is important to note when we make these comparisons between some of these different countries. Now I should mention, or something you might notice later on, is that technically Rocket Lab, which famously launches from New Zealand, is actually a United States based company. Therefore, they will be put under the United States throughout all of these assumptions. Although we're not talking about the country that's providing the payload, it's important to note what the actual purpose of the launch is, because without the payload, really there's no reason to launch a rocket. So in this video, I've broken it down into five separate categories, being a science-based payload, a military-based payload, a communication satellite, a navigation satellite, or a technology demonstrator. And these are the five different subjects that I've put each one of these missions under. Now, it could be quite challenging to differentiate between some of these missions, because in a lot of these cases, satellites don't meet only one of these categories. Sometimes it's a combination of a military and communication satellite, navigation and military, science and communications. Really, it can be a combination of any of these two. And to make it even more challenging, a lot of these rocket launches don't give us a lot of information on the payload. Therefore, if there's a lot of confidentiality regarding what's actually being launched, it can make it a lot more challenging to understand what this mission actually is. So whenever we talk about the purpose of the set of satellites, or we talk about how this has changed over time, note that this has to go with a benefit of doubt saying that we might not really know which category these fall into, but this is roughly based off of my research and judgment. So again, take it with a grain of salt. Some of these values might be off, depending on what the actual pure mission was. Now, I should also mention that any mission that goes to the International Space Station, I'm counting as a science-based mission. So that's just important to note for the future. Now, the last assumption we're going to make, and a question that some of you might have is, well, what about for missions that have multiple payloads or destinations? And for this case, what I've done is I've taken the most massive satellite or the most massive payload and said that that is the overall purpose of the mission, as more than likely they're the ones that pay the most money for the launch. So now that we've talked about the assumptions, we can actually look at some of the data. Now, the very first thing that I want to say is from the year 2010 to 2019, there were a total of 887 orbital launches, with Russia launching the most of these rockets with 260 launches, followed closely behind with the United States having 221 rocket launches and China with 216 rocket launches. Now, the combined rest of the world had a total of 190 launches over this time frame. So we can easily see that Russia has the most launches with the United States and China closely behind. 
Now, out of the remaining countries, the European Union makes up most of these, having 72 launches, followed by India with 45 and Japan with 37. The list continues onwards, and most of the other countries have upwards of a few to maybe 10 rocket launches in total. But ultimately, the main competitors that we're talking about here are Russia, the United States, and China. Now, every single one of these launches didn't exceed. In fact, 40 of them had some form of launch failure, making it roughly a 95% success rate in terms of a launch, meaning that roughly one out of every 20 rockets that launch from Earth is going to see some form of failure. The next step is by looking at the success rate for individual countries. And first of all, the United States and Japan have the highest success rate with roughly 97.3% success, which is pretty good. Followed closely behind with the European Union of 97.2%, which is again, roughly the same. Then China with 96.3%, Russia with 93.8%, and India with 93.3%. Now the next bit of data that we can cover, and actually what I began this video off of, is how has the number of orbital launches changed over the last decade? And by looking at this graph, we can see that there's been a gradual increase from 2010 to 2019. And over this 10 year period, 2018 had the most launches with 114. Now, if we look at the United States by themselves and how many launches they have completed each year, we could see that there are some large fluctuations, especially in the early time period, where they had as few as 13 launches in 2012 and up to 34 orbital launches in 2018. So again, there's quite a bit of variation for the US. Conversely, if we look at China, they remained fairly consistent over the early part of the 2010s and in recent years have performed many more launches. So it's interesting to see how these two countries compare over the past decade. Now the next bit of data we're going to talk about is for crewed launches. Out of the 887 orbital rocket launches from 2010 to 2019, 47 of them were crewed, taking 153 people into orbit. Now I should mention that one of these missions did experience a launch failure, but the crew was able to safely escape. Now this ends up averaging to roughly 15 people launching to orbit per year. But what if we actually took a look at the graph? Does it meet that consistency? We can obviously see that there's a drop off between 2011 and 2012. So what happened there? 2011 was the last year of the space shuttle. In fact, over a third of all the people that launched to space over the past decade launched in 2010 or 2011. So the space shuttle really sent a lot of people to space. Now recall we're not including 2020, but I do expect with the introduction of Crew Dragon this year and Starliner hopefully next year, we will see an uptick in how many astronauts go to orbit every single year. And again, I'm saying orbit, this does not count suborbital flights. The next question you might have is how many of these missions are exploring our solar system, looking beyond the Earth and understanding other planets or maybe our moon? And it's probably not as many as you think. Again, out of the 887 orbital launches, only 21 of them are looking elsewhere or left the Earth. Now, I call going to the moon as leaving the Earth, but for this case, only 2% of all these missions went as elsewhere. And that includes Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster. Well, where'd they all go? Well, eight of these missions went to the moon, whether entering orbit or trying to land on the surface. Six went to Mars, and one more if you include Elon Musk's Tesla. Two went to various asteroids in our solar system. One went to Venus, one aimed to Jupiter, one went to Mercury, and one is studying the sun. So even though there's a lot of missions going to space, most of them are still focused around our home planet. I personally was surprised to see that only 2% of all rocket launches are going out and exploring our solar system or going to the moon. I thought that number would be a little bit higher. But another interesting destination is the International Space Station. Over this time frame, there were 131 orbital rocket launches that intended to reach the ISS. And I say intended because some of these missions did fail prior to arrival. Now, this actually does play a pretty big role in the spaceflight industry, making up roughly 15% of all launches. So the ISS does play a big part in terms of the industry, whether it being cargo or crewed missions. Now, if we look at a graph at how this has changed over the last decade, we could see that it's fairly consistent, where each year we have anywhere from 12 to 15 launches visiting our space station. 
which just goes to show how much it takes to maintain this space station in orbit around Earth which is truly fascinating. Now, before we get into comparing the different US companies, I wanted to talk a little bit about the purpose of these missions. Now, recall there is a little bit of discretion regarding some of these missions we don't know a lot of about, but ultimately there are some pretty fascinating observations. From 2010 to 2019, out of the 887 orbital launches, 323 of them had some form of scientific intention, followed by 221 being a form of communication satellite, 176 with a main military intention, 88 were navigation satellites, and 64 were a technology demonstrator. So we can see that science is still the main form or main presence in space. Now we're going to talk about US-based companies. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you this graph again, the graph that showed the amount of orbital launches per year. But instead of just showing this, I want to take away the amount of launches that SpaceX has completed. So here we can see that there is still an increase in launches over time, but the slope is a little bit lower. In total, from 2010 to 2019, SpaceX had 80 orbital rocket launches, making up roughly 9% of all the rocket launches that happened. So let's look at SpaceX by themselves and maybe analyze what's been going on over the last decade. If we take a look at this graph, can you guess which year SpaceX first recovered a booster? Or maybe can you guess when they started reusing their already flown boosters? Well, the first Falcon 9 recovery took place at the end of 2015, and the first reused Falcon 9 booster was in 2017, where we could see a jump from 8 to 18 launches in a year, which is fairly impressive. In 2018 was the maiden flight of the Falcon Heavy, and again was the year that they experienced the most orbital rocket launches. Before we get into the data regarding other companies, I want to ask you a question. Who do you think SpaceX's biggest competitor is, or at least during this 2010 to 2019 time frame? I personally, when thought about this before making this video, I thought it would be the United Launch Alliance, or ULA mainly because they are one of the larger launch providers within the United States. But after looking at some of this data, I've gained a new perspective on what's actually going on. Now notice that a lot of SpaceX's launches aren't necessarily military launches, but are launching communication satellites or Earth observation satellites for other countries. Now, if we look at some of the data, what companies were doing this before 2019 or before SpaceX emerged? And it turns out that ULA has primarily focused on military contracts or interplanetary missions. So who was launching these missions? Let's take a look at what has changed over the last decade, not for a company, but for Russia. This graph raises the possibility that the Soyuz rocket might actually be the Falcon 9's biggest competitor. If we take a look at Russia's orbital launches over the last decade, we can see that it's been fairly steady but there has been a slow decline in recent years. The reason for this is because at the beginning of this time frame, roughly in 2010 to 2015, Russia was launching a lot of these international missions. For example, if we take a look back at the mission I gave earlier, being SpaceX launching the Argentinian SAOCOM mission, which was a communication satellite. If this same mission was to happen a decade earlier, or in 2010, more than likely it would have been on top of a Soyuz rocket. Whether the launch provider was Roscosmos or Arian Space, it would have been on a Soyuz rather than an Atlas V. Meaning that SpaceX's customer base is actually coming from other countries, whether it be for communication satellites or Earth observing satellites, which is something that I was not aware of before doing this analysis. So I thought that was personally fascinating. Go even further and speculating a little bit into 2020. So far this year, Russia has launched nine orbital rockets, whereas SpaceX alone has launched 15. So maybe SpaceX really is taking the customer base, which 10 years ago primarily went to the Soyuz. Now, continuing the discussion about US-based companies, we could talk about the United Launch Alliance, or ULA. And looking at this graph, we could see how their rocket launches per year have changed over time. Now, it's been fairly consistent with a slight drop over the last three years as SpaceX has continued to grow. But ULA still has a very strong presence in terms of defense contracts and interplanetary missions. So for missions within the United States, whether they be military contracts or NASA missions, ultimately the biggest competition as of right now 
is probably between ULA and SpaceX. But there are other companies, including Rocket Lab and Orbital ATK, or Northrop Grumman, or Orbital, those basically being all the names for the one company that has changed over the last decade. Uh, for Rocket Lab, as I mentioned before, they do launch all their rockets from New Zealand as of right now, but they are technically a US-based company. And this is primarily for contract reasons. So ultimately, Rocket Lab has really only emerged over the last few years, but has grown steadily since then. And if we look at Orbital ATK, it's had a lot of variation over the last decade with a lot of technology demonstrators, as well as missions to the ISS. But ultimately, it's gone up and down. And, and as there isn't a lot of consistency over this time frame, it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. But with all that being said, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the new animation styles or how I presented this information. And if you have any questions about some of the topics I discussed, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.